This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everyone, welcome to the last video of 2023. I'm sick of doing the hello if you're new here, I am, etc. type of intro. Uh, goals for next year, record a quick intro that I can just insert into every video to make my life easier. Anyways, I'm here with this Christmas themed illustration featuring my main characters from the comic that I am currently working on. There's a whole story here uh, full of ups and downs in terms of how this illustration went and Basically, it was completely unplanned. So here, okay, first of all, I'm gonna tell you what you're looking at here. This is the brainstorming stage where I'm, I committed, committed to doing a Christmas theme illustration after a lot of humming and hawing. And I decided to fill the very last uh, page of my sketchbook, which means soon I'm going to have a sketchbook tour for you guys, but I digress. So. I started with just a super quick jotting down of an idea. This is basically how I approach doing any sort of illustration uh, where I have a vague idea in mind. I'll just like do a couple of quick comps like this just to get the facial expressions down, like the rough composition. So as you can see here, the idea went from like a Christmas cookie spread or Christmas uh, related sweet spread on a table with the characters in front of it. And then I was kind of focusing on how Noel is mostly responsible for cooking all the stuff and baking and whatnot. And then I had this little cute idea of her being in competition with Fiona about who's got the better dessert. And then the idea just kind of kept trickling from there. I mean, it's pretty simple and self-explanatory. So after I finished doing these two quick little thumbnails, I just wanted to do a slightly more resolved pass on the facial expressions that I kind of had in mind for the characters. So that is the rest of this little page of the thumbnails. And then afterwards, I'm going to be showing you the totally failed attempt at doing this illustration traditionally, which is what I originally intended to do. And before you see that, I'm going to explain the whole little story that came before this illustration. So. As some of you guys have probably noticed, I've been doing two videos per week, which is, I mean, sorry, two videos per week. The, yeah, that would be crazy. Um, I meant two videos per month for my YouTube channel for um, most of this year. And that is my commitment to YouTube. And I'm very serious about upholding the commitment for multiple reasons, one of which being the advertisement deal that I have <laughs> going on with Squarespace. Love Squarespace, I will tell you about them later. But um, yeah, this is a, a really good way for me to keep uh, being active on YouTube because a lot of you guys know I, I have a lot of projects going on and you know, I don't have a whole lot of time. So making videos is difficult, but it's something that I really like doing and I really want to be consistent with. So anywho, I digress. Uh, approaching the end of this month, I knew I had to make a second video and I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. I really wanted to do a Christmas theme illustration, but since some of you know, I am in the middle of doing uh, just basically finishing the prologue for my comic series that I've been working on forever. And I'm just kind of really in the middle of it. And when I'm in the middle of something, it's really difficult for me to put it down. Like I have this drive to complete something. That's uh, something, it's a good habit to have, I suppose, but it makes it really hard to divert my attention to other things. And I was starting to get, like I was kind of in a bad mood for the past couple of days and I was starting to feel like, I wanna make this video, I wanna do a Christmas thing with characters cause it's really cute and fun. But at the same time, I couldn't care less about this stuff cause I just really want to finish the prologue and I feel pretty desperate to finish something in relation to my comic, like since I've already started. And so it was hard for me to switch gears to do something lighter, uh, lighthearted and cute. But in the end, I decided to commit, but my commitment was to a quick traditional illustration. As you can see, this is my uh, sketching process for the traditional little, I was just gonna ink it quickly um, and then throw some watercolors on it and call it a day. 
And then I just got completely stuck on the sketching phase. I kept changing things and in the end I just totally discarded it. And I was like, okay, this is taking way longer than I thought. I was just gonna spend like half a day doing this illustration and just go back to my comic work, but there's not what ended up happening. I figured, you know what? I'm just torturing myself at this point. I might as well just take this and transfer it to my Cintiq and do the sketch digitally and just might as well do the whole illustration digitally is what I ended up doing. Actually, the first thought that I had was that I was just gonna do the sketch digitally and then I would print it out and then, and then I'm like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> this started as I gotta make a video, I wanna do a quick Christmas doodle, and then somehow it ended up turning into this whole production where I was gonna print out the sketch and like transfer it onto paper. And that's when, thankfully, uh, a clearer head prevailed and I decided to just keep it digital, keep it simple and not go overboard. I decided to just basically clean it up, do flat colors, um, make sure they're appealing and everything, but then not take it much further than that. Cause you know, in my process, like I can really expand each step by quite a lot if I choose to. And so I had to really rein myself in and make sure that this will be a quick illustration. Uh, definitely went far past the doodle idea that I was gonna go with at the beginning but hey at the end of the day this was the best place to take a quick pause and tell you about today's sponsor which is Squarespace which is an all-in-one platform to create a professional and beautiful website for your online business and I'm happy to say that I was able to do that with shocking ease when I tried it out for the first time last year Squarespace is so easy to use and having my portfolio in place now is just so psychologically satisfying. Every time I want to add a few pieces that are representative of my work, it takes seconds to upload them and rearrange them in my various galleries which are also very easy to organize by the way. Squarespace offers super easy integration of all other social media platforms as well. And every time I want to feature a YouTube video of mine on the main website page or tweak the visibility of my Instagram gallery, I can do it super quickly and easily without knowing anything about coding. If you still don't have a portfolio site, I really recommend that you try out Squarespace to put one together and see for yourself how easy it is. You can try it out for free. Simply head over to squarespace.com to get started. And once your site is done and ready to launch, you can head to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So back to what I was saying at the end of the day, it did kind of make me think a lot about how I used to do fun little character interaction type of uh, illustrations or even just quick drawings, sketches, and whatnot, a lot and all the time back in the day when I was in college. And things have really changed for me since then. And lately, all I really do is focus on work-related stuff like freelance and just completing things like doing drawings for a specific purpose. But something that I've really been wanting to bring back is to actually do little fun drawings of my characters like this that don't serve any specific purpose that I don't have to print or like make a specific ratio. You know, sometimes it can actually be really tedious and mentally exhausting to have to constrict myself to the output or like the content that an illustration is supposed to amount to. You know what I mean? Like strict ratios for, um, posting images on Instagram or, you know, things like that, or just like planning to make a postcard. So it has to be four by six or something like that. And, uh, when there are too many things like that going on, I tend to get, uh, it just, it's too much. It doesn't allow me to just relax and focus on the actual drawing and having fun while doing it. So this was a nice change of pace for me. I ended up doing a little doodle just, well, 
keep saying doodle, it's not really a doodle. I understand that. <laughs> Sometimes I use that. Um, I just play play fast and loose with the word doodle. But anyways, um, you get what I mean. It ended up being like a little illustration. And I'm really happy that I was actually able to do something like this in the end, in time for New Year and it's slash Christmas. And it's holiday themed and it was a lot of fun. And I actually really ended up elevating my mood because I missed drawing facial expressions so much because usually um i've been doing a lot of I guess more static illustrations that are not very story driven uh outside of the comic and the prologue is i mean if i can keep it spoiler free it's not super lighthearted. <laughs> it's it's a short entry or intro into the story it's a very um, kind of expansive type of story that I'm writing and it's got a lot of things going on and there will definitely be a lot definitely be a lot of lighthearted things in it but the prologue is certainly not one of them and so I've just been in this dark mood for a while now because that's just what the prologue required of me and it was a really nice change of pace to draw the characters in such a cute and easy type of easy going i don't know funny whatever lighthearted illustration uh yes and i really really enjoyed that and i'm really looking forward to actually getting to that point in the comic uh in the first chapter I, there's a lot of stuff like that uh, it's just the prologue is a little bit different from in tone from uh, from the first chapter but anyways uh i digress talking about the comic so yeah as you can see i'm just finishing up the sketch the sketching um it was very much testing my patience when I was doing it on paper. I came so close to completely giving up many times and just like throwing it all up and just using some other footage that I already have on the back burner or something just to make a throwaway video. But I don't know. I just I really wanted to make it Christmas themed in the end and um, I'm glad I stuck through it. Uh, it was a great, great choice for me to switch to the Cintiq and after the rust kind of started to dissipate uh after I fi finished like the first two faces I was having a bit of a hard time then it went like much smoother after that and of course the little things like being able to shift and nudge uh elements with the transform you can't I don't know as much as I try to sketch on paper all the time, as you probably know, I, I do do that all the time. I do a lot of warm-ups and I do studies on paper. At the end of the day, like you just can't be the basic <laughs> simple tool of free transform and be able to just move things around. Just save so much time and the composition. Like I end up being way more satisfied with the way these sketches turn out than any of my sketches that I do on paper because it gets so tiring to erase things just to nudge them slightly and anyways i could talk about this forever but yeah i'm really glad i made the switch and the way that i'm inking this illustration is the exact same way that i'm inking all my comic pages so um it's a similar amount of effort i think um you know, this video is cobbled together. Obviously, there's a lot of little real-time chunks, and then I sped some of it up uh, at the beginning so you could see just the entire sketching process. But uh, it took me maybe about an hour to ink the illustration, which is not too bad. It actually felt a lot slower while I was doing it, and I felt like I could stand to try harder to go faster but at the end of the day uh looking back on the footage you know what an hour is not that bad for four characters and quite a detailed uh, amount of prop thingies going on so yeah that wasn't too bad i suppose and um obviously as i've mentioned many times before inking is my absolute favorite part of the process it's uh the part where i finally get to just uh perfect all the shapes that I'm going for and nudge the facial expressions to be precisely what I was looking for and I think I've gotten quite comfortable with the level of detail that I put into sketches in order to produce uh, a finished cleaned up line work look that I'm super happy with in terms of faces. Uh, I may have mentioned this in previous videos but 
you know if any of you are new here i used to have a lot of trouble with replicating facial expressions uh in the inking stage past the sketching stage because i think i used to just put too much time into sketching and uh, ended up with too many lines and of course with inking it all gets reduced down to a very simple uh version of the sketch and oftentimes i just completely lost the essence of the facial expression especially if it was something funny like it just didn't look nearly as funny when it was done and cleaned up so i'm glad to report that after all these years i have gotten way better at that and what it took essentially was to just severely reduce the complexity of the sketches it's i i try to go as simple as i possibly can with the sketches now and i'm glad that i was able to work that out with the years of practice of course and i'm a big fan of this textured brush that i have been using it for years it is from kyle's mega pack i don't know if that's still available um, for separate purchase but bought it ages ago and um, the specific brush is called china marker and i just really love how textured it is it's much much easier for me to ink uh, cleanly with a textured brush because when the brush is too smooth it's just way too hard to keep it going quickly because uh, you can like you can allow for a little bit of a sketchy look even though it's still very clean at the end, the line work that is. But I think the texture just really adds this liveliness to the illustrations that I can't, or that I really don't like when, basically I really don't like when the line work is too smooth is what I'm trying to say here. Um, yes, I haven't really done super clean artwork in quite some time, but uh, sometimes I have to for freelance work and I find that my art kind of suffers when the line work has to be too clean or the finish has to be too smooth and polished. But I digress. So yes, I was, like I mentioned, very glad to have this illustration uh, done and I was talking about how I'm in the middle of rendering the prologue now and yeah, that's been, um, it's been a lot of ups and downs with that. It's a it's like a rediscovery type of process where I have to relearn and remember how to do a lot of the stuff, how to approach a lot of um, the like anything that goes into finishing a comic page. Obviously, it's a lot. As you guys probably noticed, I do have a bit of an overachiever streak going on where I don't have a stop signal and I don't really understand how to reduce the effort if that makes any sense like for me simplification is really hard and obviously my art style is not super detailed um but it is i don't know actually it really depends on which category you want to put me in i suppose as far as comics go this is probably on the more detailed side probably not uh compared to manga but with american comics or i should say graphic novels or webtoons this is pretty detailed but then again i've seen some crazy stuff in the webtoon territory uh as well so i don't know i don't know how people do it but anyways the point is i i have a very hard time understanding the fact that uh make working on a comic it really is a marathon and i do have to conserve my energy and understand how to not kill myself over like a single panel that somebody's going to spend a second looking at if you know what i mean because that's just how it works especially since it's such a long story it's going to go on for a very long time it's not just like a single standalone graphic novel like the last thing that i worked on as far as comics go so i do have to check myself quite often here and there and i have basically come to the conclusion that i think i did go overboard on the prologue and i'm gonna have to pull it back a little bit in the first chapter and that's you know something that i'm gonna have to figure out as i get there but other than that i think the prologue is coming along nicely it's um i'm kind of nearing 
it's hard for me to gauge exactly how long it'll take to finish it. I'm really hoping that I can somehow finish it before the end of this year. I think it's possible because I'm pretty far along with it and I do have the help of a flatter. Thank God, it's really a game changer for me to have hired a flatter. <laughs> um, but yes, so we'll see how that goes. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated. Aside from that, I have been on a bit of a mm, hiatus from social media and Instagram especially. Sometimes I just get these spells where I don't want to be on Instagram. I don't want to post anything. I don't really feel like sharing anything. I'm not sure why this happens exactly, but I think it's just this mental break that I do need. And as some of you guys know, probably all of you know, social media these days is extremely punishing with that behavior uh, you can't just go away for a few weeks and then come back um, the the analytics just it's such a mess and it does end up being a deterrent deterrent for me for coming back as well like i've been trying to get the nerve to start posting again but it's been um I don't know it's just every time i think about it i know what's gonna happen like i know i'm gonna make posts i know the engagement's gonna be in the toilet and i know i'm gonna lose a lot and even though i understand that the people who drop off it's for the best because they're just not interested in my art and whatever i'm up to so it's good that they will just you know take their leave and then whoever is interested will stay oh i'm so sorry my phone just keeps going off i don't understand even it's supposed to be in not disturbed mood i don't know why it keeps uh doing this anyways i'm sorry so <laughs> as you can see this is a one take voiceover because that's all the time that i have today <laughs> i have to finish this video very quickly uh, just keeping it real, I guess. Um, yeah, not a huge fan of like super polished, super, I don't know, scripted type of voiceovers. I guess this is just, I'm a bit of a mess when it comes to these things. I do a lot of stuff, uh, regrettably last minute still. But, you know, a lot of progress has been made on that front in my life in the past several years. So, there's that. But yeah, um... I'm kind of at this point where I have like five minutes left in the video and I don't know what to talk about. So, I suppose I can just... Hmm, what can I talk about? Well, the Christmas sweaters, I don't know, the drawing. As you can see, <laughs> I tried to keep this illustration pretty simple. So, I've mentioned this earlier where I just wanted to do the flat colors and then color the line work because... I have gotten to the demented stage where I cannot look at black line art with colors anymore. It's just this weird, uh, like a brain switch where 10 years ago, maybe actually longer than that, maybe 12 years ago or something, I discovered the colored line work look. And ever since then, I just can't work with colors and black line art anymore. My life has been forever altered by that single discovery. So, yeah, if you're gonna try the colored line work look, uh, tread carefully because <laughs> it might just add hours to your process and you'll never be able to go back. But anyways, yeah, I, I was a little bit underwhelmed by just the flat. So I decided to put in a little bit of shading here and there on the faces mainly and just like a little bit on the skin so it looks less flat and i will say that it was very difficult for me to fight the urge to just keep going on this illustration and then maybe just go straight up add lighting like add shadows but that would have added significant chunk of time on top of the whole day that i already ended up spending on this so again uh I managed to stop myself at the appropriate time and actually finish this illustration uh, before I had to go to bed. So yeah, I ended up actually going back and changing a little bit in the sweater designs because it was nice and clear in the sketch about Fiona's little sad cookie box next to uh, Noel's masterpiece of a Christmas themed cakes situation um but then when i put the designs on 
uh, I put the designs on the sweaters. I noticed that Fiona's sweater is really fighting with the cookie thing. And then if you kind of like unfocus your eyes, you can't even really tell that he's holding a cookie jar or cookie box or whatever so here as you can see i just erased this like really busy center strip of the design in his sweater and yeah so here are the close-ups of all my baby's faces and the cakes really pleased with the texture on those <laughs> it really does kind of look like um uh, those paste those delicious matcha pastries uh but yeah ugly christmas sweaters uh sock is wearing a krampus sweater of course and that's it that's my offering for the christmas themed character illustration really glad i did it and love you all i hope you have wonderful holidays and i will see you guys in the next year bye